and we're here. This is the first face-to-face -face interview with the illustrious um, Just Phil. <laughs> the link to his channel will be in the description. Now, Phil, since you're not, you know, you don't, you're not usually where I'm at. This is true. We got to go all the way back. Oh, man. <laughs> all the way back to, to truck in school. <sighs> truck in school. What man. truck in school did you go to? Okay, so I'm from Florida, small town, Pensacola. Some of y'all know where it is because y'all been on vacation there. So next to Pensacola is another town called <laughs> Milton. <laughs> That's smaller than Pensacola? Yes, it's a it's a military town. You know, it's very country-like, but it's still Florida, so we got plenty of nice beaches to go to, right? So there is a school there that a lot of people, if you're from anywhere in that area, know about. It's a school called TDI, Truck Driving Institute. Mm, sounds yeah. important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to a degree, because this school, what's good about it, is that off the rip as long as you do what you're supposed to do you're gonna get a job somewhere mm -hmm. they have contracts with all the majors that you can think of and then from there you pick which one you want to go to as long as you get your endorsements your background's good so on and so forth because they send reps from uh wiley sanders prime swift um, the league goes there. yes the league goes there i don't know about now but back then the league showed up so why didn't you go to the league? <sighs> See. <laughs> well, let's get to the real stuff. Why didn't you go to the league for jump? Well, off the rip, when I got into trucking, I had no intentions of ever going OTR. That was not in the plans for me. I wanted to be at home. I had a life at home. You know, I wanted to be the man, you know. Booty me. <laughs> That's all I had up to. You had a woman and you didn't want to leave her behind. True. I get it. True. Ain't nothing wrong with that. A lot of people go through that. Yeah. So I, I didn't set up my life to be able to walk away from the lifestyle that I had at the time, which was being surrounded by people and, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, doing my thing. So I went to this company that was about an hour away from my home in the next state, Alabama, because we're right there next door. Uh, this company called, um, what are they called now? Hmm. And I was just talking about it yesterday. That's the sad part. I can't remember the name of it. Mm. Uh, did, 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 did. CTL, there it is. Yeah, CTL Trucking. Uh, now, this company, their home base is based out of South Florida. They've got like four or five divisions. They mess with live everything. They do dry van, reefer, flatbed, and hazmat, right? So, while I'm going through trucking school, I'm trying to figure out what company I want to go to. Didn't end up actually figuring out where I wanted to go until after trucking school because I just waited too long, in all honesty. So, I end up going to this company called CTL because they were like, oh, you know, we're a regional account. We can get you home. You know, you don't have to stay out crazy long. And really what sold me is that their training program was really short. Like I just, I had heard so many horror stories in the midst of going to trucking school and talking to other people in trucking school about how they got messed over by trainers and how they had to stay out on the truck two, three months at a time. I'm like, I'm not trying to do all that. I don't want to be in, that, in the truck that long with a stranger. So go to CTL. Which, at the backtrack, I got my hazmat the last week of trucking school when we actually went to take the written exam. Passed it, no problem. The problem was, in Florida, their, their driver license system's a little funny. While they do print out your license on the spot, as far as process and stuff like hazmat and fingerprinting those things, they're not exactly the most efficient. So... I went to this job before I actually had my finalized license that had my uh, hazmat on, right? Mm -hmm. So we get there, start training with this with this older gentleman, one of the nicest guys I ever met, best trainer I ever had. I wish I could remember his name. Nice, nice old man. So he had been at this company, I want to say about 15 years, give or take. And you know, he started showing me the ropes. He's like, "Here's two things I'm gonna teach you how to do with this truck: how to be smooth." and how to cut it no slack. <laughs> what? That's what he said verbatim. He said, I'm going to teach you how to be smooth, and I'm going to teach you how to cut this truck no slack. 
Now he said, you see how I run this thing? I'm running out of the road. I ain't all over the place. But you see, I get everything I can out of this truck. Mm. Cause mind you, th these trucks at the time, which they were beautiful trucks, one of the nicest trucks I ever had. It was a 2016 Mac. Mm. Beautiful truck, double bump, fully stretched sleeper. I mean, it was nice. Automatic 12 speed. And this is when automatics were just coming onto the scene. And at the time, in my opinion, Mac had the nicest automatic. Like it just it shifted good. Never missed. A I gear. had one of LCL uh, yeah. doing a food grade tanker, and I had a, a Mac. It was sharp. Now. Yeah, enjoyed that truck. Shot. Wasn't in the shot. I never wasn't in the shot with it either. No. Yeah, I never I never had problems out of mine either, other than maybe like a frozen uh alcohol line or something like that. Mm. That actually happened one winter, which I'll I'll get to that because I started driving in the wintertime. Ooh. Me too, yeah. March. Fresh out the gate. I started December. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. That's a little deeper than me. So the training process was supposed to be a three week program, right? So in the midst of me waiting to get my license with my actual hazmat endorsement because I had the tank portion. I had to wait uh, to drive because obviously you can't drive hazmat with pulling 3,000 gallon tanks. You can't pull it without your hazmat. Mm. So while we're training, I'm just basically a ride along. I'm learning all the paperwork, which I, in my opinion, I feel like was the best way I could ever learn to drive. I learned all the paperwork first, learn how to deal with the shippers, learn how to read the hazmat paperwork because that, some of that stuff can get real complicated. Janky. Yeah. And mind you, we're going to paper mills. That's our customer. That's all we do is paper mills. Paper mills, and once I went to a company that made shoe polish. Wow. Yeah, because we were hauling commercial grade um, peroxide, actually. And we ain't talking about the 1% the that you can buy at the store. We're talking about 35 and 50% grade peroxide. So it can burn you. Yes, this stuff, you couldn't get it on you, like at all. It will, it will literally dry your skin out. Like, they did this thing for training at, at our home plant called the Glove Show. Now, everybody knows what a trucking leather glove looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So, they take a peroxide bottle, filled it with 30%, poured it on this glove, laid it on the ground. I kid you not, in 30 seconds, it disintegrated into flame. It burst into flame instantly. That's crazy. The chemical itself wasn't flammable, but anything that was flammable that it touched, it will burn it. It will burst in flame because of the reaction. And you were hauling that on your back? Yeah, 3,000 gallons. How much were they paying you? <laughs> I mean, I'm, excuse me if these this questions is, are hurting. But. This is where it gets ugly. <laughs> so, mind you, I call I call anything that happened before 2018 the, the, the trucking renaissance. <laughs> the dark ages. Yeah, this was the dark ages, right? <laughs> this is before a lot of these things that changed where... I know a lot of you guys now come out the gate expecting 40 and 45 and in some cases 50 cents off the rip, right? Mm -hmm. No. I got paid 32 cents a mile. Ooh, them night numbers. Yes. Hauling hazmat. We ain't talking about package hazmat in your box. No, I'm pulling a legit 48-foot tank. <laughs> 32 uh, cents a well, mile. Maybe you got a lot of, um, you know, Doc Pato, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's you got a loading pay with tanker, tank fill pay, uh, tank weight pay, tank wash pay. No, so you didn't get none of that. Here's the thing about this customer: because it was dedicated, which it was a beautiful thing, because it made the job a lot more tolerable. But they basically they took care of our washouts. They would pre-fill our tanks. We just basically did drop and pops. We were responsible for unloading and handling the product, but in terms of of loading and actually, you know, like I said, dealing with that side of it. That didn't happen, but so here's how they would do our pay, right? 32 cents loaded only. I believe they give us 20 for empty miles. And then in terms of actual detention time, you only got paid after two hours. And the detention was, I believe at the time, $15 an hour. Mm. So they should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. And mind you, we're not only having to deal with like i said dealing with actually pulling the tanks but you had to learn how to use a pneumatic hydraulic system now some of you guys ever dealt with tanks y'all know what a pto system is there's two different types there's the kind that the pneumatic tank guys use which is a air vacuum system that's mounted on the back of the truck that hooks up to an air hose and that allows you to blow the product out of the tank with this particular chemical it's ran through a hydraulic pump so you had 
a hydraulic pump system that was mounted to the tractor that ran through the PTO. You hooked up the hydraulic lines to the actual tank. And then on the bottom, there's a box with a hydraulic pump that would actually push the product out the back of the trailer. Mm. So you had to learn how to run that properly because you had to do the RPMs and certain tanks would run faster than others. It, it, it got real technical and crazy, but I enjoyed it. I will say that much. It was, it was a fun job. It's just a shame it didn't pay nothing. Man, 32 cents a mile for hauling something that could burn you alive. Yep. And I was at Melton with no hazmat doing 37 cents a mile. <laughs> Uh, out the gate, as soon as you got there. And if you stayed there for six months, you went to 41. Man, not even. I think that particular account, I think it capped at, at 36 cents after, I believe, three years. Jeez. Well, how are they keeping people in the truck? That's the thing I, I couldn't understand. Y'all wanted day. to get to that sweet meat that bad. Well, yeah, I mean, because for the most part, you were home weekends. Unless they sent you to one of their out the way customers that needed a last minute order, you usually back back in the home state by the weekend. That's crazy, man. But yeah. you know, when you first get in, you don't know no better. No, not at all. You don't know no better. That's why we make these videos for y'all to hear that. Even the people you know, because right now you you you're making big dollars. You know, Rolex right. watches and all that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I, I can't hate on you. I know where you're at. It's a good place. We're about good brother. But what I will like you to do, <laughs> to the rookies, mm -hmm. how do they know a bad company? Well, i tell you this. A, a telltale sign is how well they treat their equipment. And I'm not talking what these customers, what a lot of these, uh, excuse me, not customers, a lot of these companies advertised to you, oh, we got the latest, the greatest, the freight line of Cascadia, we got the big dog, KWT6, none of that's relevant. Look at their trailers. Really? Do their trailers have virgin tires or recaps? Oh. How old is the trailer? When was the last inspection on the trailer? Is it at least an air ride trailer? Yes. If it's a spring ride, that's a bad sign. Run away. <laughs> Unless you're running specialized somewhere, you have to run spring ride. I don't know what that would be. No, I, I'm hard pressed to find a customer that demands a spring ride. Nine times out of ten, if it, if they're worth their weight, they're asking for an air ride trailer. Yeah, it's almost just standard now. Yeah, that's crazy. Even though I don't know, does the does the port people? Does yeah, because they they're oof, they're that's a that's a special breed. Yeah, because they don't get to be around the trailer all the time. Sometimes it's on the water, sea water. So it's, that's probably it. But if you're but then just, you know, on a regular road, that, that spring ride, usually is, if it's a spring ride, then the, the slide tandem thing ain't push. Yeah. That's the first thing. When I go back there and I'm looking for that button and it ain't there, it's this big long bar you got to pull and they don't want to come. Run that's away. it. Run away. Run away. <laughs> Run away, bro. Because that thing is a pain in the, especially when winter hit. And pray that they grease the rail. Mm. If you have a spring, if you have a spring arm for the, your, for your tandem release, pray they greased it before winter hits because... Woo. Especially when I was a Coke boy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to get into Coke Coke. Matter of fact, we're going to stop it right here. That is the start of Just Feel. It's the first of many interviews up front. Remember to go to his channel. What's the name of your channel? Just Feel TV. Just Feel TV. A link will be under this. He's a panelist on the Patreon. So if you want to ask him questions directly about starting, you will have to go to the Patreon and sign up. What's the first rule everybody knows? Don't do drugs. Don't drink alcohol. Try to stay celibate. Try. Don't be out here just praying and spraying and then wondering why 30% of your check is gone from child support. Don't do it, man. I just paid child support the other day. Mm. $1,800. Pressure. I thought I paid them, mm -hmm. but it didn't go through like the auto draft. Yeah. Didn't go through. So then when the auto draft did go through, it doubled it up. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! It's just like, no. god. but you know what? I only got three and a half years left. Bang on my Smurf! One second. 